Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our June Ada J. Author New User Webinar. This is Jessica Frank, and I'm Ada J. Author's Project Manager. Each month, I like to include some tips and tricks that relate to issues that have come up with Ada J. Author over the past month. This month, it's an invitation to attend our annual conference. Cali is Ada J. Author's parent company. We're the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. Each year, we put on a conference devoted to legal technology, law schools, and the innovation that is at the intersection of those two. Our conference this year is in Philadelphia at Penn Carey Law School from June 15th to 16th. I'll be doing a quick A to J author introductory training session, and we'll also have a session on the Kentucky courts and how they're using A to J author to automate forms, including using law students as tech resources. The conference can be attended in person. We'd love to see you there or virtually. And you can register at 2023.calicon.org slash registration. I also wanted to remind you all about our sample exercises. There are 12 exercises that range in complexity and time commitment that you can use to learn new skills in A to J Author or to practice some of what you already know. You can find those under the Learn tab on our website or by following the link shown here. Today's topic is the last 10% of completing your document assembly project, selecting the correct exiting options for your end users, testing your interviews and your templates, and publishing them so that your end users can actually use them. First, let's talk about the five exiting options. This screenshot is of the destination page for the buttons tab. It's showing you the five options to get your end user out of your interview. We'll talk about each one individually over the next several slides. So first, let's talk about success process form. This is the one that you're likely most familiar with if you have been an A to J author for a while. It's used when you have a hot docs template or a standalone A to J guided interview. By standalone, I mean there is no template. So for example, an online intake form that goes into your case management system or an interview that is intended for information only. This exiting option sends the user's answer file to whatever server is set up in the A to J viewer via a post request. There should be only one button with this destination per interview. For the successful end user who has completed the interview, this should be the last button that they click because it is going to close the A to J viewer in their browser and send them on to whatever the next server is. So to review, success process form is used with hot docs templates or when there is no template at all, and you want to, you want to send the user's data somewhere else out of the A to J guided interview. The next option is exit user doesn't qualify. This is used to redirect an end user to another website or another resource when they don't meet some parameter or qualification that you've set for using the interview. So for example, they aren't old enough to use the interview, they make too much money, they're not in the right jurisdiction. You can branch your end user out of the interview to a set URL and the A to J viewer will close and redirect them to whatever URL you've entered into the software. When you select this as an exiting option, a URL field will pop up in A to J Author and you'll be able to type in whatever or copy and paste in whatever URL you want to redirect them to. If you leave that URL field blank, then A to J Author will tell the end user to close their browser because they don't qualify. So it's not an automatic, you do have to put in a redirect, but if you do leave a blank accidentally or on purpose, this screenshot um, will pop up for the end user. The third option is exit save incomplete form. This is used when you want your end user to be able to leave the interview partly completed and come back later to finish it. This requires you as the author to enable this functionality in a couple places. It also requires that the server you're hosting your interview on have the capability to allow an end user to create an account, save their answer file, and reload it into the A to J viewer. Both a j.org and LawHelp Interactive have this functionality, and I'll talk about those two hosting options later. If you're interested in self-hosting, we have instructions on how to set up this capability as well. So as an author, though, to enable this functionality, you create a standalone question. That means one that isn't connected via branching to another question. And you have that page say something like, you've clicked the exit button. If you want to exit, you'll be redirected to a screen to create an account or log into an existing one to save your answers. You can come back later to complete this interview. Do you really want to exit? And then you should have two buttons, one that is labeled something like exit or yes with the destination of exit saving complete form and another button labeled no or resume. That one should have the destination of resume interview. 
That's the safety hatch for the user who accidentally hit the exit button or one who's curious and hit the exit button just because they wanted to see what it did but didn't really want to exit the interview. So you have the option to actually exit, give them that verification step, or to take the end user then back into the interview. Now you as the author have one final step to enable this exiting option. You have to go to the steps tab and add this standalone question as the exit point. This tells A to J author to show the exit button in the top navigation bar of the interview and to allow end users to exit partway through the interview. When the user comes back and reloads their answer file, they'll be taken back to the point in the interview where they left off. The advanced end user navigation panel, which we added about two years ago, shows the end user where they've been, their history of their previous visits through the interview, and where they have to go in the future. So you can see here that they left off at step one, question four. Assemble Generate PDF is the first of the exiting options that is only intended for use with the A to J document assembly tool, the A to J DAT. So it is not to be used if you have a hot docs template as the back end template generator. With this option, it generates a PDF for the end user but leaves the A to J viewer screen open. The user then will have to manually close their browser. It also doesn't send the user's answer file anywhere. It doesn't pass their information onto a server. This should be used when the author only wants the user to get their document and nothing else. No saving of answer files is intended. Generally, this is used for short interviews where the interaction will be a one and done. It's also used in self-hosting instances when the server doesn't actually have the ability to store answer files. So it can be used though on LawHelp Interactive, on a j.org, or with self-hosting. So this one is the one and done. You don't intend them to save their answer files or come back later. They generate their document and they leave. The fifth and final exiting option it, to discuss is assemble, generate PDF, and process form. This again is only to be used with A to J DAT templates and not hot docs templates. Similar to success process form, this generates a document for your end user and sends the user's answer file onto a server to be saved. So it uses that post, the same as success process form, to send the user's answer file on to either LawHelp Interactive or A to J.org, or if you are self-hosting and set up uh, the capability to save answers onto that server. So now that we've talked about how to exit your end user, let's talk about what you as authors need to do to make sure your interviews are complete. This is often neglected, but it's a vital part of your interview development process. Testing. Testing should happen throughout the authoring process. Testing and authoring go hand in hand. You create a series of questions or logic statements, then you go into preview mode and you test them out. You want to make sure A to J author is doing what you expected to do. If not, go back and review your logic or your branching. You want to make sure that the questions are looking as you expect them to look. There's not weird spacing. There's not too much information in a single question. Then when you're finished authoring, you should spend a good amount of time testing the different iterations or paths of your interview. Test saying no to one forking question, then going back and answering yes. Does it branch as expected? Does it ask all the questions that it needs to do? You can create a series of answer files to then test against your template. So there's testing within the interview and there's testing then to make sure that your interview captures everything that you need in your template. In preview mode, when you want to create a uh, answer file to test your template, you open the debug panel that when you've completed the interview, you've gotten to that exiting question. Then you click save in the upper uh, corner, in the top left corner. This is going to download your answer file then to test against the template. I like to create a couple answer files before I start template testing. So I have a standard one that I save on my desktop that has like basic username, birth date, address. I use that one across multiple templates when I'm just testing A to J author. When I'm testing a specific interview, I have multiple templates that have one child, that have five children, that have a different father for each child, that have different addresses, that say yes to one branching question, that say no. You want to have some answer files that give you range to test all the parameters of your interview and your template. So once you have that, you can test your, your saved answer files against your templates either in the templates tab within A to J if you're using an A to J DAT template, or you take that saved answer file and you put it in your Hot Docs developer suite and test it against your Hot Docs template. You want to make sure that all the answers line up and where they're supposed to on the actual form and that there aren't any blanks where you expected there to be information. 
This can take a couple rounds of back and forth with making changes, retest assembling, rerunning through the interview, following all the paths. But testing is hugely important because we as authors know the happy path through the interview. You made it so you know the correct way to get to the end result. You really have to test all of the corners and make sure there aren't dead ends or gaps where your end user might get stuck. It's going to save you hassle in the long run because for sure your end users will find those dead ends and gaps if you don't test now. So now that you've dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's, you're ready to publish your interview and share it with the world. There are a couple of options. You could host any interview designated for self-represented litigants on A to J Authors' very own A to J.org. We currently host those for free with support from Cali member law schools. You can also host your interviews on Law Help Interactive, that's LHI for short, if you have a developer account with them. They provide hosting for um, nonprofits and courts that have accounts with them. There uh, is also the option to self-host if you want more control over your interview and any user saved answer files. To publish to a to j.org, you go to the Publish tab and select Publish to a to j.org. It'll publish your interview and give you a link to share with your end users. On a to j.org, you have the option to mark it live or in demo mode. Demo mode puts a watermark on the interview to let your end users know that it isn't intended for final use. If you mark it live, then we're going to ask for some basic demographic information about where the form is intended to be used, what state or province, and the website that you'll be linking to from. Publishing to LHI also happens under the Publish tab. You can publish to their live site or their to their development site called Rebuild QA. You'll be prompted to log into their system with your LHI credentials and asked for demographic information as well. Once you publish to LHI, any issues that arise or um, login information that you need should be handled through them. Once it, you hit a site that is branded with LHI, uh, that's beyond our control. So any questions about that, um, you can reach out to me and I'll give you the correct contact at LHI for that. For self-hosting, you can find the files you need and the information uh, on how to host it in our GitHub repository. Our A to J backend developer, Tobias Enterejo, has done a great job of creating instructions on how to self-host. The first place you want to go to is github.com slash ccali slash A to J viewer. It will have the instructions and links to the A to J dat repo and the A to J depths, our dependencies folder, um, our dependencies repo if you need those for setting up your, your own self-hosting. A to J Author is open source, and so all the files and information you need to set it up on your own system is available and updated as needed. When you're ready to publish your interview, um, if you are self-hosting, you can download your zipped interview file from the Publish tab and put it onto the host server, however you've configured that. To do self-hosting, you do need a sysadmin level of um, expertise on how to set it up on your server and, and the correct permissions within your organization. If you're hosting on a to j.org or on LHI, the tech commitment for that is very low. The, the publishing is very just click, 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 and then it's live. It gives you a link that you can share with your end users. Self-hosting is a bigger lift. So after you've published, you always want to make sure that you test your A to J guided interview, again, on the site in which it will be live, on the server that is running live. So the A to J viewer within A to J author and the A to J viewer that is on a server for um, public consumption are pretty much the same, are almost exactly the same, but it's always a good idea to test it again live on the server in which it is living on. You want to test with subject matter experts, with clients, potential users, run through the scenarios and try to hit all of those possible branches um, and not just hit the one happy path. As always, you can reach out to me throughout the month, uh, jessica at cali.org if you do have questions. And our next webinar is July 6th at 11 a.m. Central Time. So hope to see you all at the Cali conference, um, if possible, virtually or in person. If not, I will see you in July at the next A to J user, uh, new user webinar. Thank you for attending.